Hello, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Gil Barros. Uh, I'm here with uh, Vikan and Sihil, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we've learned from uh, one of our most recent uh, large-scale telco deployments, uh, where we did OpenStack plus uh, SDN. Okay. Uh, just a little bit about what we're going to talk about, uh, who we are, <laughs> the, the timeline of uh, what an OSP engagement like this uh, looks like, you know, where we start, the, the many steps in between, and uh, hopefully where we're going to be, uh, the challenges uh, that we bumped into, which I think is what most of you guys are interested in, in figuring out uh, where you're going to bump into problems, um, and uh, hopefully how to solve them. Um, there was a lot of new functionality added to OpenStack with this uh, engagement, so talk a little bit about uh, how, how we got there, right? I mean, how, how did we define what the new features are that were needed, um, and how to get that into OpenStack, or how Red Hat was able to get them into OpenStack. Um, some of the interesting things that uh, we worked on also, um, creating some testing automation uh, with DCI, and we'll talk a little bit about DCI and uh, the future of what some of these third-party uh, integration efforts are going to look like with uh, composable services and composable roles. So hello everyone. I'm very happy to be there with you in Barcelona, nice city, and uh, you can hear um, sometimes it's pretty hard to sleep very early. <laughs> so I'm a senior consultant for Red Hat. I'm coming from uh, the Innovance Acquisition. I'm focusing on uh, cloud technology, principally OpenStack, deployed with a director. And uh, as I can, I'm um, doing a commit upstream. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vikan Christian, and I am uh, a Red Hat from Innovance Acquisition, the same as Cyril. But my role is more uh, uh, to, to be a senior technical project manager involved and uh, I'm leading and contributing to the delivery of cloud projects and using our iterative delivery methodology mostly. Thank you. Uh, and as I said, I'm Gil Barros. Uh, I am uh, by title a product manager, but really I'm more of a partner person. Um, I've been at Red Hat for a pretty long time. I've had a few different roles. I was in consulting on Wall Street. I did uh, support and support strategy, and most recently I'm in the OpenStack business unit um, handling partner engagements, which is how uh, I got involved in this one. So really quickly on what, what the timeline of this engagement in particular looked like, uh, which is actually pretty similar to some of these more complex engagements uh, that we've uh, been involved in. Um, so uh, around the middle of 2015, we had um, an RFP that got published, we put together an answer, did some POCs, uh, and really investigated what the uh, upstream SDN integrations looked like in uh, OSP 7 at the time. Um, there wasn't a lot there, <laughs> let's say, so really it was uh, figuring out what we would need to do to uh, get to the point where our customer uh, wanted us to be. Um, Deal signed pretty quickly after a POC. Uh, p interesting POCs that we did. Uh, quite a few um, other OpenStack, uh, I guess, competitors of ours um, were also delivered POCs to, 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 you know, give their take on how they could do these integrations and how they could do this uh, deployment. Um, but uh, we signed the deal in February and got services started pretty, pretty quickly in March um, with uh, on site. Uh, to get started with a customer understanding um, sort of what their environment really looked like uh, other, outside the RFP, right? The RFP gives, gives us sort of a, 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 very, a very sanitized look of, of what they'd like uh, an engagement to, or a deployment to look like, but then there's, you know, what does the customer um, environment really look like, right? It's not, not always quite the same. Um, <laughs> At that point, uh, we're able to put together uh, our ideas for integration. So we did a HackFest um, in June uh, with uh, OSP 7 at the time? Eight. eight. Seven or eight? OK. We did, I think the we most, did one with seven and one with yeah. eight. Um, and uh, with OSP 8, uh, we got uh, a bunch of upstream uh, work done in, uh, in Triple O to get the client side uh, SDN uh, plugins uh, deployed. Um, that brings us to a few months back. Um, 
UAT, user acceptance tests from the customer. Uh, we're in sort of the pre-production platform phase right now uh, where, where the customer's uh, doing some final tests and we're going live uh, very shortly. Let's see. So, in terms of uh, project challenges, so it's here just some of the of the main challenges that uh, we, we are listing. And uh, there are really three uh, main entities. So the customer, uh, we are at Red Hat, and the SDN partner involved. And what was really uh, challenging is that the, um, uh, the agenda of, uh, and the priorities as well as the objectives of the three are, I mean, we're not really the same, uh, even if the target, of course, was the same. So you had the customer that had to go in production uh, in Q4 this year. Uh, and what uh, is interesting is that Red Hat, the full, I mean, the target platform with the full integration with the SDN uh, was scheduled for the same period of time. So it's some already difficult to have the go live with the products at the same time. And what uh, is even more complex is that the certification on the same platform with a partner, the SN partner, is scheduled for next year. So we are not yet at, at, that, at that level. So that's one of the main challenge uh, in terms of um, uh, schedule. The, the second point is about the, um, uh, the, the expectation of the customer in terms of the maturity of the product, even if they understand quite well that uh, Red Hat is delivering open source products. Uh, but they are still expecting much more mature products, documentation, and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we, we agreed that from the beginning that we are building that with them. So that's an interesting point. They agreed on that, but still expecting you know, the, the top documentation from, from day one in terms of integration mostly, because you have, of course, the documentation of OSP, but the integration is something different. Um, so the customer is expecting that, and at Red Hat, we are focusing more on uh, products, delivering products, not services. We're not selling services. So that's one of the challenges, because uh, integration is, is about having services. It's not about the product itself uh, to deliver what the customer is expecting. So that's uh, a big challenge on our, on our side and, and for me to, to deliver that and to uh, coordinate that. The, the other thing that is interesting and not easy uh, to deal with is the culture thing, cultural thing. So the customer is really working with providers. So he deals with providers, not so much with the community. It's not something that they are used to do. And at Red Hat, we do everything upstream first. We, del we are delivering you know, open source codes, and uh, we are more a community uh, company than uh, you know, a, a provider. So sometimes it's not so easy to, to discuss, to plan things, because we, there are some uh, cultural uh, shift or, or uh, mindsets that are yeah. difficult to, to deal with. Things like acceptance of uh, features, right? I mean, it's yes. like they have to be accepted upstream. Even though this is exactly what the customer wants, we still have to negotiate that upstream and make sure that it fits with the OpenStack community. And the, the main impact is more on, on the you know, delays and the agenda, mm -hmm. because you need first acceptance from the community before they're doing something. So it's not just you want that, we can do that right now and it will be there. You need to have the acceptance of the community to certify that, to make the projects, and so it takes time. Absolutely. Um, and really quick on the jump back uh, one. Okay. Um, uh, really quick, we talked about uh, sort of lining up these roadmaps, right? And, and it's interesting because it, it's not that we don't want to have lined up roadmaps, but it's because we're, we've, we've each got a, call it a product in mind, right? I mean, the customer has the product that they're delivering, delivering to their, their customers. We have an OpenStack product that's going to meet those needs, and the SDN vendor, for example, may have you know, an SDN product that is going to integrate with that OpenStack product to create the, the deliverable. So getting those to all line up together has probably been the, the toughest thing for us because this gets released here, this gets released here, this gets released here, but this has to be worked on way back here because that's when it was initially submitted exactly. upstream. For exactly, that's why I, I have to work a lot to, to, to fit the gap and to provide them a way to deploy it 
um, with a, the better life cycle, the better experience with it, and uh, doing the job to refill the documentation, help them to understand what the goal, what the will, what will uh, be the next to have a really um, um, to take the right choice to don't break everything with the next version, some some topic like that. So, yeah. Basically, we are working with Director, our product, based on Triple O community. So, as Agil say, you have to do an acceptance from the community to implement feature. We have our roadmap. We have many things to do because we start Triple uh, um, O in production with OSP 7.0. It was pretty hard at the beginning because many, many stuff to do. Um, sometimes uh, issue to solve it. And right now we have a, a solid product and a lot of people uh, I hear in, a, I don't know if you take time to go to a, a session, technical session to discuss with an FA guy. All, all body in the room say, okay, well now we are ready to deal with OpenStack. We know how to deploy it. We know how to do the life cycle. But when a partner and um, I'm at me in, when a SDN coming in the picture, it starts to going, going more harder to understand how oh, oh, I want, how oh, I will deal tomorrow with my life cycle, how oh, I manage it, because uh, it's not, you know, straightforward. And the customer was expected that was expected the documentation straightforward to just follow the documentation, go ahead, and sometimes you have your partner shoes in a way and uh, is not fitting with you, so you have to deal and to take time to implement what is needed to go through to what the customer needs mm -hmm. really at the end. So it means uh, basically uh, our partner working more with, um, with the pack stack, doing the certification API of pack stack. So it was an issue for us because uh, we, we don't want something, you know, we want to expose um, an open stack for scaling. So we need specific uh, nodes with, uh, for example, uh, we need database outside, we need some change, and uh, as a, as a partner and us, we don't have to take time previously to test it, so we test on live and it's not a, the best way to do that, you know. When we are facing the customers, we are doing together the job and we, we solve bugs, so it's not uh, when you have, a, as a, we can say, a, a timeline very short, because uh, mm -hmm. it's deal by what the customer need for them customer. So it's not, we are building a platform and when we are ready, we're launching a service. It's a, we will launch a service. Guys, let's go. We have to do the job. It's not the same timeline and it's pretty challenging. So at the end, OSP 10 is supposed to do the job fully, but is not there for the customer. So we take time on OSP 8, previously in OSP 7, to do the job and to improve step after step uh, with, uh, with looks uh, um, uh, from a Red Hat mentality, uh, the agile uh, methodology, to improve step by step, to add feature, and to have the proper refactoring some parts, to have the proper deployment at the end. And to, to know there is some difficulty, like uh, certification take time, you have to wait uh, the right version of your SDN partner to, to be ready to test it and to implement it. So there is some of delay and it was a... a yeah. So we broke down the, the integration into two parts. Uh, so the immediate requirement for the customer was that we're going to go live um, at the end of this year and uh, OSP 10 wasn't going to be ready. Uh, well, OSP 10 plus the SDN integration and the uh, SDN partners software wasn't going to be ready. Um, so, as you mentioned, we had to, to put a significant amount of effort into OSP 8 and 9 to do uh, initial uh, integration, uh, which means uh, we were deploying the client-side SDN software. So the, 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 partner, uh, the SDN partner tools were still deploying uh, the, the SDN backplane, the SDN management, and web UI, and all that kind of stuff. But we were making sure that our compute nodes were properly configured and talking back to that backplane. Um, and, th and that's really what took a lot of time in OSP 8 and 9, because it, it, honestly, at the time, OSP 8 wasn't ready for that kind of manipulation of what gets installed into, uh, into the compute nodes. 
So a little bit of work there, but uh, we're in a good spot now. So I just wanted to highlight uh, other challenges. So uh, the, I put that as people challenges. In fact, uh, one of the main objective of the customer is to be autonomous and to be able to deliver, I mean, to support internally the teams, to have the knowledge as soon as possible on how to deploy and uh, be able to provide so internal services to the different uh, uh, customers. So because he wanted that from day one, he didn't invest so much in services. And it's not what we do usually, because when we have a large scale deployment, we prefer to secure that we have and, and bring our experts and do that and show them how, how it works, and then they can reproduce it. But it was not like that. They wanted to do by themselves from day one. And the, one of the big challenges is that we have only Cyril on site, <laughs> so only one guy on site, helping them to understand how to do it, document it, and uh, try to support their internal teams. So that's really, really difficult. We managed to do it, hopefully, but that, that's a, a real big challenge. Uh, what uh, we usually do uh, is typic typically to have a, a workshop at the beginning just to align everyone because you have many entities, you know, partners, customers, and uh, our teams. And we know that if you are not having an alignment from the beginning on where we are going, why we are doing things, what are the, the constraints, the problems, it is very difficult. And we didn't do that. So it adds a lot of challenges because of when we'll, we'll see that communication issues, synchronization between the different entities, and it's, it's not so good. So that, that was one of the, the, main, the main points. So the other one is, of course, as they wanted to do everything by themselves, they didn't have on their side all the knowledge from day one. So it takes time. Everything is more, you know, is more slow to do things, to implement things. Uh, and on, uh, on the, I mean, the last point, uh, what is interesting, I mean, maybe yeah, you can... Yeah, from, from the uh, sort of the, the Red Hat and the SDN provider, SDN uh, partner, um, it, it seems like, as expected, we have deep knowledge in our own products, but very little knowledge on, on our partner's products. So that caused uh, uh, quite a bit of, of trouble when we were trying to, to, to do integration where, um, say, Red Hat Engineering is working on configuring uh, the client side uh, compute module, but we don't really know how to configure that compute module, so we're working off of, you know, partial documentation and, you know, lots of back and forth between us and, and the, the partner to figure out how to do this, or vice versa, right, when the, the mm -hmm. partner is uh, trying to do a new deployment with Director, which they hadn't used before, they were using Packstack, and again, just bumping into, into problems. Um, and I think this is one of the big lessons we've learned is we need a much deeper integration between us and the partner with mm -hmm. a lot more people, either on site or some sort of partner engineer exchange or something like that that we're, we're still trying to figure out. But it was definitely one of the, the biggest areas where we, we saw a significant uh, slowdown. Yeah. And uh, I, I think there's a, a French uh, term for that, the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I just wanted to put you know, a, a picture to illustrate. The thing is, you know, on OpenStack, you need experts to do the, I mean, on large scale deployments involving, you know, deep, uh, uh, SDN uh, understanding mm -hmm. and in the telco market with the MAV and every, everything. So you need experts in every, you know, mm -hmm. every aspect of the, yeah. of the deployment. So in French, we, 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 have, uh, we say that we are looking for a, a five, uh, five, five foot a ship. Five feet uh, yeah. ship. So le, 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 le mouton. Yeah, mouton. So, uh, it's, in <laughs> French, it's a uh, mouton à cinq pattes. So you, you will not few. A few, few things from, <laughs> from the French <laughs> expression, yes. but never mind. Oops. So, yeah. I, I like this picture, because um, when you're talking cloud, you think, oh, I will spin up a VM, I will delete it, I will respin it. My, my VM life is near one day, one week. And uh, we have a difference there, because uh, sometimes when they're looking for something, they have the history when they put something in production for 10 years ago, uh, 10 years old or, or more than the antenna. So it's 
it's very challenging when you're coming from um, um, the web or other different place. Telco have a very other point of view, and you have to deal with that. To understand security is very important. You can have a no-go just for security. And we are looking at products. Well, okay, well, it, it looks secure from that point of view, but sometimes they don't. We don't uh, align on some topic, and we deal with it, especially to have a real segregation between data plane and control plane. Basically, we are doing that by network, but it's not good enough for telco. They want different nodes with firewall between to allow only one one-way discussion. And we are lucky because uh, with OpenStack, we have a way to do that. With a message abuse, RabbitMQ, it's pretty simple to do it. But the implementation is not ready for that. So we have to deal with, uh, oh, I can hack it to have something running, and oh, the support will support it when the customer will call. Because uh, this topic is, uh, the customer will deploy this infrastructure in many, many countries. And I don't want someone to call me at 1 a.m. because they have an issue in Singapore. So it's a very interesting point. We try to, to address it as best. And um, it, it was really a challenge. After another point, who, uh, I take time to explain. When you are deploying a product, you are deploying a product. We are deploying an ecosystem. It's not the same deal. It's not the same ID. And you have to keep in mind, if you touch something, you can break another thing without any appearance link. So it's another topic with that to really provide the, the help, because uh, as, as we can say, the customer would like to have the knowledge of what he's doing. And it's, it's challenging, but it's interesting, because uh, you, all the time you have to think about what you are doing, why you are doing, to explain it to the customer, and to be sure it makes sense. So you, you challenge every step of your deployment. It's sometimes stressful, but very cool at the end, when you have a win, when you have something working, when all people around the table agreed with a solution. Another topic about support. Why people want to use Director today? Because they figure out life cycle could be a mess with every six months a new release. And as I told you, sometimes they put something for 10 years. It doesn't fit. So we have to help them to have the better life cycle. And basically, when you're just using OSP director, it's working almost straightforward, even if you don't trick some stuff, if you are using the right uh, way to use the product. But at the end, when you integrate, as we did, another partner in the loop uh, who is not uh, ready to do that, you have to ask some template to add the feature you, you need, all the time you have to keep in mind the life cycle, you know, the day after what we become, because uh, we are going through a version for May, three years is not the same timeline as I, say, I told you previously, when they put some stuff for years and years. So it was a big, big, big challenge for me to achieve that. We need to go first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seems like we're uh, going a little fat, slower than we expected. I'm so. looking. <laughs> I'm talking a lot. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, one of the really important uh, message and uh, lessons from this deployment, and something that we we used to do at Red Hat is a hack fest. But this time, we, we were doing an integration hack fest. So that's something new and something very important, as the objective is to align not only internally, but with the partner. So we have engineering working together in a room for a certain amount of time, usually one week. 
uh, and share you know, the knowledge and the problems face to face. And that's really important if you want to go faster and to test things, validate things, and have something that is documented by the right people. So it's always difficult to have, you know, to put these kind of people in a, in a, in, at the same place yeah. for one week. It's a kind of important investment. But the, the return of investment of that kind of event is really uh, tremendous. So it's really important to do that. Uh, so as I said, the, the deliverables are usually a full documentation on all the things that they tested on the product. So usually the use cases that I expected from, from the product and from the solution here. Uh, with, because we are doing a kind of integration test that is not something that we usually do. We'll find new bugs, so it's important to list all the bugs and to follow them. So that's really something important, and uh, that's one of the uh, you know, good outputs from, from this. Uh, that was a key, I think. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Key of success. Yeah, they, they were definitely the, the largest peaks in, in the I guess forward movement we're during the Hackfests, right? With both us and the SDN partner in the room, you know, the, the, the right engineers together, right? I mean, as you mentioned, it's expensive. You have to fly people across the world, yeah. but it's a week in which you make significant progress. Yeah, because as we said before, you don't have so many experts. So you will have mm -hmm. one or two guys that knows almost everything you need to, to, <laughs> to know for, for, the, for the work. So you have to, to take this guy, one or two guys that know, or you will have more in the future, of course, but to put them from each partner or each entities together. And then out of this, they will know each other. So everything after that will be easier. They will come with a documentation that, uh, I mean, is proof that it is working and everyone will uh, be able to reproduce it because we will have the, the right people uh, to do this documentation. So that's very key. Okay. All right, so uh, why Red Hat, right? What is Red Hat bringing to the table here? Um, one, of, one of the big things that we talk about is sort of our, our capability to drive change. Uh, Red Hat is one of the main contributors upstream um, and definitely on the O project uh, and has quite a bit of experience doing project management for these large deployments, right? Be it in telco, FSI, or healthcare, or, or whatever. Um, so w we're familiar with how to understand uh, customer business needs, turn those into um, specific technical deliverables, deliverables and then uh, push those and, and sponsor them in, in upstream community. Um, I think one of the, the, the things that Sihil mentioned was that it's, we're really not talking about a specific product here, it's, it's an ecosystem, right? I mean, every, even though uh, your compute nodes are over here, it could be rebooted, that actually could be touching something else that's gonna have a problem or your SDN controller node you know, that you expect is, has a touch point here might actually have multiple touch points. So being that we have experts in all of these uh, fields and have access to partners with experts in all these fields, I think it's a, an important part of what we can bring to the table. Um, really quickly on how we handle these uh, these feature feature requests, or really sort of converting uh, business needs into into feature requests. Um, it, it's a lot of communicating with the customer, communicating with uh, n not just the technical. Uh, people at the customer site, but also the business people at the customer site, um, and turning those into specific features that we'll either be driving with our partner for them to submit upstream, uh, be that part of uh, the, the integration of the SDN, um, and uh, work with uh, sort of our, our peers upstream to get them accepted. Um, We've talked a lot about aligning life cycles and aligning roadmaps. Uh, one of the, the items that came up uh, in this project was uh, we wanted to make sure that um, an extended support release of uh, Red Hat OpenStack and an extended support release of the SDN uh, software were lined up, right? So OSP 10 um, and the partners, you know, long-term support or extended support version matching that. Um, and that was one of the things that pushes, that has pushed this out into early next year um, is their version of uh, uh, their product with long-term support is only gonna be available there. 
Um, sort of the long-term vision of how we can accelerate a lot of these things uh, is through distributed uh, continuous integration. Um, it's, our, our work with uh, other partners and other customers has shown that this is probably the single largest time saver available. Basically, it automates uh, testing of uh, the customer software or the partner's uh, software and the SDN integration um, together with uh, the OpenStack bits um, from the pre-release phase. So basically, uh, the DCI uh, infrastructure at the partner site or at the customer site would have early access to uh, re early Red Hat builds. Uh, we call them puddles. <clears throat> but uh, basically, they're internal uh, Red Hat builds that they get automatically pushed to the customer site. And I've, I've got a, we can probably skip to the slide that has this, and I can. Oops. Yeah, I'm talking about that. So let's skip to the slide, and I can next one. Um, so basically, the, the DCI uh, repository just gets pushed to the customer site. Um, the DCI agent on the customer or partner site deploys OpenStack and deploys the partner software uh, or the customer software or the SDN integration at that point um, and runs uh, both uh, regular Rally Tempest uh, tests that we have uh, for OpenStack, uh, but also specific um, <coughs> partner and customer tests. So we'll, we'll work with the partner, or the SDN integrator in this case, um, and uh, create specific tests to make sure that their SDN deployment uh, as part of OpenStack worked, and we do like a quick shakedown, and then we return results to Red Hat, and we can say, yes, we're good. Or uh, what happens, of course, with early releases is, oh, this didn't work. At which case, instead of being in a situation where the product is already released and we find a bug, we're actually finding these bugs early and we can fix them before the GA date. Uh, so I, I think this, as I said, is probably the biggest time saver because we're not waiting for the OSP GA date and then the SDN software GA date and then we do integration testing between the two, right? We're doing integration testing as the product's getting developed early and we're fixing bugs as the majority of engineers are actually focused on working on a release, right? I mean, if you think about engineering time slices, usually you have engineers very, very busy working on a release as it's coming up to be released, right? So nine out of 10 engineers are working on the upcoming release, one out of 10 engineers is working on maintenance for a prior release. These numbers aren't accurate, but it gives you an idea, right? So as soon as OSP 10 comes out, Nine out of 10, again, making up this number a little bit, nine out of 10 engineers are going to be working on OSP 11. One out of 10, that doesn't work. One out of 10 is working on uh, maintenance of the previous release. So you can fix bugs much faster here than you can here. Yeah, so um, in terms of communication, so there are, uh, I mean, we understand that there are many entities, many. Uh, different uh, business units, and uh, uh, the, the communication is key and was a, a big challenge, and it's still a big challenge. So, uh, yeah, you have which functionalities do when, so we need to, to make sure that we will have the feature that uh, the customer is expected for the, the right uh, deadline, uh, which test requirements for which version, so everything is, uh, is important and everyone should be synchronized on the version, the features, and, and everything. And because you have uh, you know, the uh, Red Hat versions on the different uh, products, you have the partner with the same thing. So it could be really uh, uh, a mess quickly if you are not synchronized on all that. And uh, the three-way communication here uh, is really critical. Okay, so we need to find the best uh, way to have everyone aware and, and on, in sync on the hot topics, as well as the right people doing the actions uh, to, move, to right. move forward. Quickly identify stakeholders, right? I think yeah. is, is, is key here. So if I go back uh, to what we didn't do initially is the, that kind of workshop when we have all the people aligned, that's really key if we want to have no more issue later on. So we didn't do that, and it was one of the, the, big, the big problem. So it was difficult to say we have that person as the owner of these actions, it, so because too many people involved, and yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. 
So really quickly on uh, functionality in OSP10 that's that's helping us here. Uh, one of the uh, features that we championed uh, upstream for OSP10 was uh, composable roles and composable services. Um, it's the idea that uh, Triple O has the idea in OSP8 and 9. Uh, and early, have the idea that there's a compute role, a storage role, a controller role, and these are sort of well-defined locked-in roles, right? A controller has, you know, Horizon, Keystone, et cetera, et cetera. A compute role has Nova, et cetera, et cetera, you know. Um, and the idea behind composable roles and composable services is that you can break these down and create your own custom roles. Um, you can compose roles, if you will. <laughs> so, you know, you can you can move Neutron around to different, uh, different controllers, Keystone, et cetera. Um, but more interestingly, at least for me, is we can have uh, third-party software deployed in roles. Uh, so our SDN partners, for example, could have a role for their web UI and a role for Cassandra, um, or rather, services for these that are rolled up, rolled up into a role, well, <laughs> um, and then put them on nodes. Uh, and I just put a quick blurb on, on sort of how that configuration looks like. It's actually surprisingly simple. Um, and uh, we can thank Steve Hardy for that, <laughs> amongst many others. Is an all time matter of, I don't want to get an issue when I'm in production. <laughs> So test, 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 Hackfest is your friend. And it was very amazing to, to, to meet all people uh, on who deploy something or who made something to talk to, oh, oh, oh how are you doing that? Oh, you, oh it's amazing. Right. Oh, we never think do that with your, with, with your product. Oh, we will take a try. Oh, you are doing that? Oh, yeah. It was very amazing, very intensive week. And at the end, you start with nothing, and at the end, you have something working, and you say, yeah. Good, good, we are good. So uh, every time you have to test, of course, we prefer to test before facing customer to have something really working. But when it's challenging, when you are not ready, um, we have to be honest. And uh, we try to do it with a customer to say, OK, well, we are not perfect, but we will do our best to provide you the better experience to be sure on production you will be able to have a few issues at least and be able to reproduce it, uh, your, your full uh, platform in our, on our side to help you and provide you quickly as you can the back fist and everything. And for sure, we will continue with the next version for OSP10 when, when we will be ready to start the job previously, may contact the customer to have someone from the customer on site to be sure we are aligned with what he wants to do, what is needed, and to do the same access to provide him the right documentation, how to deploy now with the next version, our products and SDN product. Okay, so yeah, so was just kind of some summary of uh, the lessons learned and a few things that are important uh, to do uh, from our point of view. So the, as I said, the usually the discovery design workshop that we, we do at the beginning of the project is key, is really important and uh, helps uh, to avoid all the, I mean, many of the communication, synchronization uh, issues that, and, and knowledge sharing. So to have usually all teams, it's more about the, the different entities. It's not everyone, of course, uh, involved to, to have the same level of information, uh, to share the detailed architecture. I mean, at least the high level architecture, but to start to discuss about the, the detailed one and, uh, and to have the right architects involved, um, to have the list of all requirements, at least the one that we have at that time, because it changes, it changes a lot. Uh, and to identify the roadmap with the, the, the implementation targets and the, the ownership. So the, you know, the, who is the owner of what is quite, quite important. With how we are going to communicate together. Uh, because that's, that's uh, something very difficult as well. The tools used to the communication it could be uh, something difficult. So um, we need to align upstream, so because we are working uh, uh, as uh, uh, 
you know, uh, open source projects. So Red Hat, the SDN partner, and the customer early on the roadmap in order to lock, yes, feature, architecture, yeah. and timelines. Otherwise, we will miss the, the target. So that's really important. Yeah, I think one of our one of our pain points with the uh, scope creep here has been because there are four independent work streams effectively, right? I mean, if we have scope scope creep after the upstream release has gone out, the chances of or the effort involved in getting uh, something new backported into OSP10, for example, or OSP8, is uh, exceedingly larger than if we had just added it initially. So we really need to try as much as possible to lock functionality and say, okay, no, this is what you need at this date, and this is what you need at this date. Um, because otherwise, we're always gonna be sort of chasing the backport, right? Chasing the new feature, uh, which in this case is, is even more painful than if it was a, you know, a proprietary product that there's one person doing. Yeah. So uh, something that is quite difficult but very important is to have a, a shared platform shell integration platform. So we didn't have one that was quite difficult. Uh, but that's something that definitely is important, uh, to have something to test on the right architecture with uh, everyone involved. And as we discussed about the DCI, the, the continuous integration, the distributed continuous integration platform, that's as well key in order to match the deadlines and to avoid, I mean, the bug fix later, but uh, to, to fix things early in the mm -hmm. process. So make more hackfest as yes. it was some really the, the, uh, the, the key element in the timeline that changed almost everything in terms of relationship with the customer and with the partner. Because after that time, the, the customer were much more, was much more confident in our capability to work together and to deliver documentation and something that is working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think looking back, uh, so our plan was to do one per uh, OpenStack release. Uh, looking back, I would, would have done more than one. Yeah. Um, definitely one per release, and then one maybe mid-release to confirm, you know, did we have bugs back here that we expected to fix? Did they get fixed? You know, can we validate that? Um, but the, 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 the difficult part here is that it is an investment. Yeah. So you cannot do that, you know. <laughs> Every month, it will be very difficult. But uh, as soon as you do that, you need to do one, I mean, early in the process to, de to demonstrate the value of it. And as soon as you have this, then I'm, I believe you will have investment for more. That's the idea. If we do it every month, we should cycle, right? Paris, Honolulu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you can, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So I think that's it. Any questions? Uh, anything you guys would like to ask? Yeah, I know we have people here from both the customer and the uh, SDN partner, so you may get to uh, get more insight than uh, you were expecting with your questions. All right. Yeah. Feel free. I know there we're. Is a question. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Maybe you can. Yeah. Move. Wish. Well, so. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, um, a lot of architectures now support least spine mm -hmm. uh, topologies in the networking. Uh, I know that's a feature that's not currently in OpenStack Director. Um, do you know any plans to put it in in the near future? What version that would go into? I, I'm looking at a person who may be able to answer the question over there, and he's <laughs> saying. <laughs> do you have an answer, Mike? Let me run over there. I couldn't hear it either. Yeah, with the Mickey, it's going to be better. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, a feature request out there. Um, it's presently being worked on, um, but we don't have any commitment to which um, release it's going into, but it is being worked on uh, pretty intently. Um, you can look into a lot of the work that Dan Snedden is doing upstream and, mm. and follow along with where that is um, day to day. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Any others? Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
So for automated testing, what did you guys use? Is it just the Tempest test? Um, so the automated testing uh, projects that we have is an internal DCI project. Um, it uses the DCI agent that uh, distributed continuous integration is what we call it, DCI. Um, and it uses Rally, Tempest, etc., and numerous uh, other sort of hacked together. Um, but uh, definitely if you're interested in understanding more about DCI, we can put you in touch with uh, the right is, is that the same thing you use to test the integration between yourself and the ESDN uh, partner? But basically, by the way, uh, by the way, it's a good start to, to start with uh, with a tempest test. But for example, with a SDN, you have more different stuff. And uh, basically, we work on a, a rally um, uh, rally implementation with different uh, hook who is calling the feature of SDN to test service chaining, a uh, lot of stuff. So yeah, so it, it is. We use it with our partners and our customers, right? So anybody who has a specific use case, uh, be it you know we're we're checking that the the I keep almost saying the the vendor name and yeah, not. I'm trying to trick you into saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. <laughs> um, so we're, we're it's currently in process to develop the the tooling to test the specific functionality of the SDN partner. Um, but yes, that is that is the goal. Nice try. <laughs> it looks we are late. Yeah. Sorry about so, that. Okay. Other Thank, you. Thank, yep. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for much. coming.